The Gemento Keys and Ragged Islands are a group of the southernmost islands of the Bahamas. It has a reputation of being very, very far away, isolated from any resources or supplies, and to us seemed like a place only really hardcore cruisers might go, not us newbies. All clear ahead. The charts warn cruisers to prepare themselves for all sorts of hardships. No marinas, no government rescue, no fuel and little water and few supplies. Even the route to the Raggeds from the cradle of Georgetown and Elizabeth Harbor requires passing through a channel with a scary reputation called Hog Key Cut. Having the right weather and tide is imperative, lest one be washed up on hard rocks in this narrow pass. Wow, this water is amazing. Look at that, holy moly. The depth here is about four to five meters. You can see straight down to the bottom. It looks like a beach down there. You can just see it by on the boat. Oh, the water so clear that it looks like you. What's well, not even in water? All right, hockey cut. Made it through. We have trees behind us there. Hopefully they don't follow our track because it's too shallow. The kids are up and at it. Early, late, they are like the Energizer bunnies. It is printed in big highlighted letters that one needs to be self-reliant and competent in the raggeds. But the trouble is, no one ever tells you how you'd know if you and your crew have sufficient experience, competence, or navigational skills. Regardless, we found ourselves wanting to push that envelope in search of some paradise and made our way south along with our buddy boat Abitries. This is a very interesting site. We found a dead hermit crab out of a pond, so don't let hermit crabs in ponds. They die, and this guy totally fell out of his shell. Don't wait yes. how long this pond. Flamingo Key and the Raggeds. That's right. And we are in Coconut Bay, and there's a shark right there swimming around. Yeah, I'll swish my hand and put it in the water and it'll come. What kind of shark is it? I think it's a bull shark, because they can feel vibration in the water. It's just right over there at Mai Tai. But it swims around waiting for kids to drop in. Oh, Juicy kids. Nope. Now it's going to be coming.
end up whack the whole thing out. <laughs> So this vein, so you just cut them up. Okay. This? You're only seeing half of it because it's bent. Just don't it. Uh, there's the resident shark. It was here the first day we got here, greeted us, swam around. We thought it was a stingray, but it's definitely a shark. And talking to our neighbors, these sharks are not to be messed around with. Don't feed the sharks here. These sharks attack humans. It's true. Daddy, I don't trust it. Wolf Pack 2 told us about a story of his shark encounter. He took a nip out of his wetsuit while he was fishing. So. We're not going to be doing any snorkeling around here. There's my tie, another Leopard 45, and there's Wolf Pack too, right there, another Leopard Catamaran. There's the shark swimming around, waiting for the next splash. It's waiting for kids to fall in. It knows. I'm in the port engine bay here and I've noticed an oil leak so I'm checking it out. It looks like the oil leak is coming from the sail drive. We did a little bit of motoring today and I've noticed that the oil has leaked again. Uh, I cleaned this up yesterday so all of this would be new from today. But there's nothing under there. It's just around the starboard side. I think that's called the bell housing. There was a little bit of oil yesterday here in the engine bilge and it looks like it is pretty dry on this side. The cap does not look like it had any oil coming from it. So oil level looks to be uh, still in range so I don't have to top up the oil yet. But if it keeps leaking I may have to do that. After several days at Flamingo Key, we put the sails up to continue south. The first part of the day we motor sailed. While we had winds off our port quarter, which is usually ideal, they were light and the following waves were such that our boom and sails kept flapping back and forth, rendering them ineffective and wearing on the hardware. I found this to be the most frustrating set of conditions on happy seas. There's Abatrice, our buddy boat. Mark and Adina, Hazel and Weston sailing alongside the Ragged Islands. We're going to Buena Vista Key. Are. are you doing some schoolwork, Sierra? Yeah. Once we passed Man War Channel, the sea smoothed out significantly and the winds picked up, turning a frustrating morning into a perfect afternoon. Look, it's calm down here. Seas are flat. We're going a pretty decent speed. We're going six knots with just our sail. You kind of forget you're sailing. I was doing some videos and I'm like, oh yeah, I'm sailing. Gotta watch where we're going. Okay, you guys, how do you like this sail? I had to look out a few times to make sure we were still moving. This is what they call sailor's crack. A sailor's crack. It's have such a good hit when you have a really nice sail. That's what you keep chasing. The sail has been really smooth this last half. So smooth, in fact, that we bypassed Buena Vista Key, which was our initial stop, and decided to continue right down to the very south of the Raggeds, down to Hog Key. This is my favorite reading. It has reading and writing. Ka-ow. Mm -hmm. Cat. 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 my teeth. Then he checked them carefully. Six knots. Main and jib out, no motors. An angle of 120, one foot seas. That's my kind of sailing. Very peaceful and relaxing. And then I go whack, 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 whack. And then there's the bee. And then there's this. <laughs> Sarah, did you know that? No. We are. <laughs> In the rag 
thinking there's supposed to be lots of sharks. Sounds like there's a lot of nice fishing, snorkeling, very remote, some of the most remote islands of the Bahamas. So this is an achievement, guys. Cheers. Cheers. Yeah, cheers. Cheers. With hockey. Oh, the magic dragon lived by the sea. And for it in the autumn, we will have a holiday. Little Jackie made her all that.